Yeah, welcome everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. That's what alts are for, Gia. I guess we can go ahead and kick it off, huh? Sounds good. All right, so to get this ball rolling, we'll start with SL20B, the big 2-0. Quick update on our 20th anniversary event. The theme for this year is our fantastic future, and we encourage everyone to join in on this celebration. SL20B will be 20 days running this time. We're approaching a month of just fun. We're gonna start from July. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we're gonna start from June twenty second and run clear until July eleventh. So that's plenty of opportunity for everyone to uh, hop in and enjoy some of the festivities. Yeah, really twenty. Twenty. Yes, it's been the end of Second Life for twenty years now. <laughs> Applications are now open for exhibitors, volunteers, and performers. And you'll find the applications for each of these and more on this link here. And we're still waiting on the merchant applications to open up. So uh, keep a uh, tab or bookmark or follow our featured news page because that's where we will make a mention. And you can also uh, visit community.secondlife.com. We should uh, have word on there, too. 20. That is humongous. Yeah, I've been good so far, and I haven't peeked on any of the prep work, but I imagine it's uh, going to be quite the thing. I mean, there will be a lot of regions and a lot of things to look at. So yeah, I don't want best, cheeses or best walking shoes. Just just walk in and get blown away. Uh, seriously. I hope so too, Sassy. It's it's really it's a bit of a landmark. Indeed, Panther. I'm wondering if this one will be almost, because it's, it's a future concept, I wonder if this will be almost the, the antithesis of the steampunk look. Be all fancy and modern. Also, I'd add that uh, one of our larger resident event, resident-led events is going on right now, which is Fantasy Fair. Uh, which is fundraiser for Relay for Life. Um, there's also quite a number of amazing, amazing regions to check out there. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Sistrum Synod, which is a gorgeous build with an amazing role play backstory. Um, but really, each of the, the 22 regions in Fantasy Fair this year are worth a look and checking out. Um, that event uh, actually closes on the 7th of May, too, so probably best not to delay. If you want to take a look at that. Indeed. Where, where, again, wear your best running shoe or walking shoes. Uh, stay hydrated. Pace yourself if you can. It's hard sometimes. Twenty-two, oh, yes. Yeah. Quite a few. Fully decorated. Yeah, 
it just shows you the scope of the events nowadays where you can have an event that spans 22 regions. I'm not talking about like clone copies of you know existing material. We're talking about unique settings. I'm actually not sure how many regions will be at uh, SL20B when I think about it. Probably a bit more than that, actually. Oh, yeah. Every, every year, it gets bigger and better. Every year, we, we outdo ourselves. I would expect nothing less from this year, especially when we hit the big T-Zero. You charge Disneyland prices fifteen dollars per corn dog. You'll have to pay extra for the stick. <laughs> oh, and you want ketchup and mustard? Oh, that's just gonna be extra. <laughs> I'm assuming you want that cooked too. Adam, I would say these are, would be original creations. So uh, if you visited any of the previous uh, SLB parties, um, you might find some f uh, familiar venues, but uh, by and large, um, they're all original creations made for that event. I know that we've uh, used uh, event regions with the birthday before. Um, I obviously don't have any information at this time, but I wouldn't be surprised because we've used those for the last two years. Oh, you're quite uh, the type of region. Huh? Yeah, they'll probably be the event regions. We're talking about the type. Right, event regions, Adam, correct. Well, the scoop this week is destination guide changes. <laughs> Many of you have probably seen, uh, we gave destination guide a little bit of an uplift. This is another part of our our continuing efforts to uh, modernize our user interfaces for um, you know better clarity uh, efficiency uh, just to keep it refreshed as well and um, also to highlight the strengths of second life which I believe is in the the appearance of the avatar uh, as you can see in a lot of our our new pages you see large splash images of very very nicely rendered uh, avatar so um, this is something that has obviously been a focus, especially as we work on the materials viewer, which is going to bring just some, another layer of depth and realism uh, to the Second Life experience. Yeah, PBR. Uh, so this one, this update is a little bit more than just a uh, cosmetic update. Uh, adds some long-needed search and sort functions to the destination guide. Uh, so no longer are you just looking at a list and clicking next until you find what you're looking for. Uh, there is some uh, organization uh, that has been implemented. So you can learn more about these changes and how to go ahead and start adding your favorite destinations here. And as an added tip, um, if you'd like to see anything else added to the destination guide, if you have any questions about the destination guide, um, this is the email address that you would reach out to that team. Editor at lindenlab.com. I suppose I should jump in here because there's a bit of a clamoring for the uh, GLTF uh, PPR materials. Um, work is continuing on them uh, as 
those who know, it's a fairly major update to lighting materials uh, within Second Life. And a bit of news on it today, uh, there is now a release client viewer. Um, just came out today. Um, that can be downloaded there. Um, it is worth noting, however, and let me add to that because you're exactly what it's going to get to Dimintex. Um, you can use the viewer on the current grid, but not all the features are available yet because we're still getting the server support in. But you can at least check out the viewer. You will be able to see everything. You just won't be able to edit any of the maps just yet. Um, but you'll still see all of the effects and see how it looks on your on your items and on your builds. Um, so just a little caveat on that, but you can at least see um, all the materials, um, how that's going to look. Yeah, it is still disabled server side, and that's just because the code is in the process, and it'll be here soon. Um, and yeah, it probably, you know, we'll probably see all that in place oh, before 20B. So, you know, I know that's probably a goal. So it's really, it's really quite pretty to look at. But yeah, it's definitely, it's officially soon. You never know what might happen. Um, but do check it out if you can, because really pretty, really pretty stuff. And if you do want to actually, you know, get in there and really get down and dirty with it, you do have to still log into the beta grid uh, to create and to view the new materials together. Um, uh, but you can do use those in the Materials 1 region, uh, Materials Adult, and Rumpus Room 1, or Rumpus Room and 2, 3, and 4. Um, and of course, if you've never logged into the beta grid, or if you haven't in the last year or so, uh, go ahead and file a support ticket, or contact us in live chat. Uh, we'll get your account copied over pretty quickly. Within a few hours, usually. Yeah, That's it's pretty going. quick. And one other thing I'll bring up here just uh, while I'm on a roll. Um, uh, uh, not currently on the beta grid, unfortunately, to talks, but we do have several sandboxes available for the testing. Um, I did want to add one more thing here about uh, one of the new features, uh, which is the scripted agent status. Uh, we added a new feature to regions uh, around the end of the month, allowing you to block scripted agents from your regions, uh, bots, if you will. Um, if you are an estate owner, uh, you can set this one of two ways, either using your region debug console, which is available under the develop window under world region estate, or if you're using the latest Second Life viewer, I'm not sure how many third parties have it yet, but if they don't, they'll certainly have it soon. Um, you'll find it under the estate tab under world slash region estate. Uh, this should make it a lot easier to keep the script agents off your regions if that is something you want. Um, you can also read more about that. Um, let me get an URL here for you. And yeah, I mean, that's always a problem. If you do see people that are, uh, you're seeing unwanted script agent traffic on your island, uh, you feel they might be you know, circumventing the script agent rules, please do file an abuse report. Um, that'll help take care of that. Also, conversely, if you find yourself having trouble accessing areas that you feel you should be able to, uh, but you can't, uh, double check to make sure that you aren't uh, incorrectly set as a scripted agent. Uh, you'll find that on your account dashboard after logging into secondlife.com under account uh, scripted agent status. It's uncommon, but we have heard of a couple of people that may have played with the setting in the past or didn't know what it was at the time, and it didn't really affect them. But uh, now they're coming across places that they can't get into uh, because the system thinks that they're scripted agents. So you can always twiddle the checky box there. That'll fix it for you. Darkover, um, not sure they... I haven't heard of any uh, news of a mainland parcel setting it. Right now, this is for private region owners to uh, Yeah, manage. It's, it's just region right now. Yeah, Karen, I agree. Um, 
I think even when I was playing MMOs, you know, 15 years ago, uh, bots were a problem. I don't think they'll be going away. Especially as more areas of the world are uh, upgraded to faster internet, stronger machines, more people are able to log in. At least we have some tools for private uh, region owners to manage this. Finland is a massive estate, so we'll let you know if this uh, tool becomes available there. Because it would be right up our alley uh, if something like that is released. You guys would know. Anyone happen to have any questions on this or anything else pertaining to uh, concierge land issues, um, please feel free to jump right on in. Ask away. We can only tell you whether we, whether we have an answer or not. And that's one I don't have a good answer on. However, that might be something to take up at the uh, uh, appropriate user group meeting um, or even file a JIRA on as a possibility. Um, I'm not sure though. I know a lot of there's a lot of issues with um, you know items and permissions. So there's a lot of things that can't be transferred between uh, alt accounts, um, but I'm not sure on items that you've made and then being shared. It would probably be something that's best taken up with them. I really wouldn't know. To add on what Izzy said to Mintox, uh, although right now it is only available through support ticket, um, you can submit a feature request and um, basically suggest that uh, you'd like to see it back on the um, mainland portal. Um, we have a team that reviews all new suggestions, you know, gauge their feasibility if it's something that can be possibly put on a roadmap or given further consideration. So um, any idea like that, we mention it a lot here, pretty much every meeting. Um, if you have an idea, no matter the scope, big, small, um, submit it in. Uh, the worst that can happen yeah. is it gets reviewed. It's, it was a pain because I wanted to bring up a, a couple of open spaces and I put in a ticket and you know, time was of the essence and you know, it was, took too long. So it, it's kind of, it, those things being separated from uh, concierge and to the land team, I understand the different reasoning. However, uh, not having a direct path to, you know, as concierge customers to the land team for the needs and having it separated out uh, is kind of a pain in the butt, you know, because, you know, the concierge can do X, Y, Z, but this sort of thing, it being off there, which just means we can't bring it up, can't do it for certain things, you know, it, and you know, ticketing always is a pain because it takes forever a lot of times. My feedback, two cents. I was like, I have a mic, I can talk. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, it is something that we have to also manage almost on a daily basis. Uh, the different workloads between the teams. Um, yeah, we have our, our hands full as well as the, uh, the main lane team. And I know they try to delegate it as best they can, you know, the roles that we do and the roles that uh, Izzy and Wendy also have. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, I'll put in a feature request for it. It's, I miss it. Uh, another question about sure. parceling um, and some of the, the land tools. Um, I know that it's, I've already called math quite a few times about it, but moving 
everything in the sim up or down and changing the land levels in bulk. I know we can do the raw terrain and pour it and change the water levels that way, but it's all the objects that get to be the problem, especially when joining sims. Um, it's I know it's all data in the database and stuff, and something like that should probably be easily automated within transforming XYZ locations and stuff, but it's a pain. <laughs> um, yes. And also, you know, being... <laughs> it is a manual process. I, I think we have a knowledge base that's probably showing its age uh, that can talk, you know, walk you through how to move a build, but a lot of it is still manually clicking and moving and maybe dropping it into a container. Um, but you don't want to drop everything into a container and end up with a coalesced object that you're just, you know, you can be able to res because it's too big. We got to get you into Pakistan anyways. Um, it, it's very uh, time consuming and manual. I, I agree. Um, that could be a future, another future request, right? Say, let's come up with uh, maybe a way to move a build, you know, in its existing arrangement from region A to region B. Definitely um, a feature request like Vix was mentioning. The main hang up that I see there from a tactical side is the fact that obviously on a permissions level, all the permissions of everything in the build uh, have to be, you know, it's going to go by the minimum uh, permission that's on there, or I guess it, it conversely the maximum permission. Uh, just like when you link a bunch of objects, the worst possible permission is what everything takes on. So that can become very, very convoluted when you're doing that with a build. Uh, mm -hmm. And so then that ends up creating a huge support load because somebody's like, everything in here was full perm, but when we dig down into every little piece of every little item, you find the one little texture that wasn't, which is the whole reason yep. why everything failed. And so that blown up on a huge scale becomes a big issue. So I think that's are, why are it's tied to location out. depth. This, that's my question. Permissions are, are tied to location data in y'all's system, then? I don't know. What I mean, though, is if you're moving it from one location to another, you're picking it up and putting it down. Oh. And if you're okay, picking so. it up as a build, then you're effectively merging it all together into one thing uh, for the purposes of your inventory temporarily, in which case then it's almost like linking it all, which then I see there being a permissions issue. That's what I'm saying. Right. right. My, my comment was simply when joining Sims that you have like so say their land level is set at 100 their water level is set at 90 something like that right they join up to a sim that has a water level of you know 35.5 right and and the whole build there that's already existing this is two existing sims I mean, the tediousness of, of literally moving the land down flatter at the same you know within the same features slash just changing the high and low and then the actual ground level that can be done via texture of course but the objects, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was saying in the database, it could, you know, just simply change the XYZ logs by a multiplier. But I, it, apparently there's nothing like that. <laughs> Right. The, uh, and also, unfortunately, I can also see certain instances where you wouldn't want that to automatically happen. So then it's like, do you have a checkbox for do happen and not happen or whatnot? So, but I, I, I do was think it's an instance. I was thinking I request tool basically where we request it. I, I did call and see if y'all you know, can help, but they're like, nope, we can't do that. And the reason behind that was that uh, even y'all are not allowed to touch uh, most people's objects, especially people who example like say somebody is no longer with us and their objects are still there they can't be touched unless the owner returns of uh, the same returns them right yeah yeah uh, we've tried very 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 hard not to alter uh objects in the world because you know there's yep. such a uh a connection to them um that honestly i probably wouldn't want my objects to move <laughs> right correct so it wasn't more like moving them like changing them, taking them, thing. it's just more like repositioning them. Right. Yeah, like a base a number. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. And moving it's, it up or down. Unfortunately, we have a Z to, level. 
Yeah, we have to look at everything from the aspect of how will this be abused when figuring out what we can and can't do. Um, and that just, I, I don't like that we have to do that, but I do understand why we have to do it that way. Um, just like speed limits are out there to because some people without speed limits will, you know, completely do things that are absolutely dangerous for everybody around them, not just for themselves. So unfortunately, we have to look at how things can be abused and broken and whatnot whenever we make features. Speaking of that, and I see a governance here, uh, the a little side tangent about uh, IP rights and people copying different things like layouts of and, and builds, even if they're a uh, collaboration of different store bots and self-bot things, uh, you know, just questions on how, like, just put in a... a Governance ticket for that when we're DMCA. How how is that? Are y'all handling that these days? Just curious. Perfect. That's all I need to know. And here I was about ready to pull up the link, but it's already dealt with. Can't be quicker than that, is he? We'll be talking it. soon. <laughs> Did everyone here watch the uh, YouTube video that uh, showed the first glimpses of the mobile viewer yet? I'm sure that was a topic we covered previously. It came out about a month ago now. Yeah, I'll paste it here. Might as well share it again. No, mobile viewer. Nice, First mobile one. viewer. I do have a question about uh, some land stuff, too. <laughs> um, the the ground yeah. texture. I know it's a repeating tiled texture. Any possibility of taking that and wrapping a 256, 256 bait texture that we can bake? Uh, not currently. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, there's four levels of texture uh, that are randomized using a random Perl and noise generator that create the ground textures. Um, but there isn't currently a, a single bake uh, like what you're what you're looking for. Um, but that would be, in my opinion, a good Jira. Um, I know that we're always looking for ways to improve it, and that might be one. Yep, that is, I was just thinking that because, you know, you're getting people baking in shadows and things because, you know, the uh, lighting is kind of, that's, y'all should work on that next to lighting. But I think and you guys can take care of that. And stuff, you think will affect <laughs> that? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, we could take it and, because uh, you know how, like, when you're raising the land up and down, you get distortion at different levels and different things. So Absolutely. being able to, to take and, because uh, if you have the height map that you already have, we can take that into, like, Max or Maya and then bake our ground. That's That was my thoughts. And, of course, the fact that the texture resin is still viewer-based. Correct. Correct. Because, I mean, if you take a look at alpha channels and stuff, man, that's a nightmare for everything. I think my questions are done. Thanks, guys, for answering that. We appreciate you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for the great and questions. Thanks for uh, coming by with the questions. Indeed, Sassy. And I know there's also been, uh, I've seen folks asking also for uh, the ability to use materials on the ground. So that's another possible addition. Watching reflections while walking across it, that would be cool. Come on, we all want to just be able to spray paint the ground with the different terrain textures rather than have it be global. <laughs> That we would love to be able to paint it, yeah. <laughs> Ground textures, things like that. Any other questions, uh, things well, people want to bring up? 
Mari's got a question here. Um, more than likely, there's a, there's at least an extra hidden person in the group, uh, mm, so therefore yeah. there are actually still two in there. Unfortunately, when someone has themselves hidden, but for that, submit a support ticket, um, and the concierge team can actually look and see who's still in the group to see what's holding it up from actually getting uh, closed. on a basic computer i mean it's pretty good it's good room but otherwise um it's not a uh, nothing close to an alienware <laughs> it really doesn't matter we're still using open gmail so unless you're on windows and get going to go into the, the direct x realm or something like that we're not going to get much of a performance boost wait carol you don't have the standard issue quantum computer to run second life like the rest of us And is I think that's what's required to run run Black Dragon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have quantum cloud computing. Just wait for the materials viewer uh, trying to work in tandem with mobile, and your your uh, uh, iPad will have lots of fun. Although I will say in testing for the mobile viewer, um, one thing that Patch will freely talk about in his testing, he once left it on overnight, and it didn't crash. Interesting. Speaking of that, there's the, the web viewer. I think y'all partnered with them, right? Um, I'm, I'm going to put in a jar for that thing, but those sort of tools or whatever for, for people would help um, basically bring people in because one of the biggest things is getting people to adopt SL or come into SL. I mean, first part is the avatars, but then y'all have kind of dealt with that. The second part is the awkwardness of the client along thing, but the mobile viewer I think will be great. And maybe, you know, I hope it's going to, I have to test it, but the uh, web view too, the one you'll have, I just, you know, a lot of people don't feel comfortable unless it's hosted on like actually y'all site. But yeah, it, that would be great on it. Karen, I can't see Second Life ever going mobile only because there's just so many things uh, that you really need the computer to be able to really experience. Um, and I mean, look at building tools and whatnot. Uh, I can't personally imagine a even the larger phones doing anything with the right kind of detail to do that. Did y'all separate out the build tools from it? Because that's actually an interesting concept of, quote, a full like feature build mode versus a viewer mode. The mobile viewer hasn't really completely been done right now. They've got, you know, their test for it and that's what the video is. Um, and things are going to be added to it. So I don't think we're at the stage yet where they're deciding this is going to be in it and this isn't going to be in it or not yet. Right. One of the old viewers yeah, actually had the, Oculus, at this point. The, the, you know, the, the 3d, you know, uh, Oculus, you know, type stuff. Uh, I think it was like cardboard compatible. Are y'all going to have any plans for VR with that? Honestly, right now, I don't Can't know of any VR plans uh, at the moment, but I will say way back when, the biggest problem with VR is there's no industry standard. Uh, and so it was constantly changing. So even though we were trying to build stuff for a VR viewer, then it was this changed with the Oculus and this changed with the Vive and this changed with another, yes, Sassy and motion sickness and whatnot. Although that's come a long way from back when Second Life had a VR viewer. Um, so I think my personal not really as a linden just having been with second life for so long is that i don't personally see us moving to a vr viewer until the industry kind of gets a little more standardized uh for it but that's just my personal next week there could be a blog going hey we're doing it i also think there yeah. was uh two other things the price point on the headsets when we were uh, playing around with it, as well as the availability, you know, the uh, the resources, how many, where are the headsets, um, how many can be available at any given time. Uh, right. So, you know, we were, I think we were ahead of the curve a little bit in building out 
uh, tech for VR, but it, it was it was not a as mainstream as let's say you know the iPhone where everyone has one either an iPhone or an iPhone. Right. It was and that's where cheap. maybe AR focus would be good. Being able to do something with Second Life and AR. That'd be Absolutely. really interesting. I love the combination of VR and AR. It's just wonderful. Yeah, like being able to like say, okay, I'm in this and then you can you know have some sort of AR features where. Because I run uh, role playing games and, and DCS is like you know, an MMO toolkit, basically, and those sort of things would be so interesting to do. Well, and also they now have you know the lightweight glasses and stuff that do a version of a um, uh, Google Maps kind of a thing to get you from point A to point B via augmented reality. Imagine a video game that put you know your enemies and monsters and mountains and whatnot in an augmented reality capacity. That's, the possibilities are endless. Imagine being able to have yourself because now they've got the Oh, uh, what it's mocappy, I think is what it's called, where you put these uh, little bracelets and uh, anklets uh, on you that goes ahead and uh, moves your avatar the way that you're moving. Uh, and just we're getting so much uh, closer to quote unquote ready player one than we even realized we were a couple of years ago. So it's kind of wild. Any chance of us getting uh, more animesh attachments then for that sort of thing? I mean, that's kind of. The limitation, I mean, I understand at least if the, with the highest tier premium account, I'll just unlock like 10. So, I mean, it's just That's, something because it's keeping it's keeping people like for, with Bento Buddy and things like that and like weapon creation from doing anything because one person's got an animesh to help and my weapons that I do for the gaming stuff, just they won't do it, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, like Wendy was saying, even the stuff about VR and whatnot is so far beyond the scope of our group. We don't really get that information. Um, so I, we need to kind of, even though I love it, which is why I kind of went with it, and I probably have Wendy uh, whacking me in the back of the head going, come on, rein it back in. Um, so we really need to kind of stick to the uh, concierge and land type questions here. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the the you, so I tend to run a little. Right, exactly. Oh, I, I think it was a good discussion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's always, it's always fun to deviate, and it's just kind of nice to chat sometimes with it. But uh, back on topic, debug tools for performance stuff. Are we going to be getting anything more? I mean, I know pretty much we can look at something, but it's really sometimes hard to tell what's causing uh, performance issues. I know a lot of time it's probably avatar rendering, but when I'm talking like physics and stuff uh, and things. Um. Probably not. Um, I haven't heard anything, um, but unfortunately, you know, we, we can never um, say what's going to happen next. You know, uh, they do release, you know, the annual roadmaps of things that we'd like to work on, and every now and then something pops up. They're like, "Hey, we, you know, we just released this." Um, but if you know, the most I can we probably do here is, is guess, uh, and I would say that uh, as far as performance tools, evaluation tools. Um, I, I don't see anything new coming out, um, but what I will say, because we're here, uh, if there is an issue that um, you're struggling to pinpoint, um, definitely reach out to us because we can stop by and help. And there's a few things that we have on the back end that might also help as well. So in case the viewer uh, side tools aren't, aren't uh, giving you an accurate picture, reach out to us because then we can uh, jump in and see what we can do with our available resources. And you're gotcha. the ones that don't exist that you want to exist. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, it just, I, I give, uh, just for a good debug log. What, you don't like it when you get an error message that says, see the uh, debug log, and then there's no error in there? Exactly. Yep. Or you turn on debug ray tracing and it's like, I don't see anything. Come on, that's called an engineer's way to keep their job security. Waiting for uh, <laughs> posting the information. We do actually have a separate group that will talk strictly about viewer and server side um, uh, related articles and issues. So I, I definitely recommend you, you sound like a worthy candidate <laughs> to sit in that meeting as well. Thank you for answering about the other stuff. So, uh, the, yeah, because 
uh, yeah, it's um, ticket times though. Question with y'all and the land team stuff because um, we're currently doing land moves and other things like that. Um, what is y'all's typical turnaround? Uh, with regards to, uh, I'm sure Izzy and Wendy can probably come with them, but anything in particular like uh, uh, picking up an abandoned parcel, uh, previous. Uh, but like open and buying, or you know, open space buying, um, that sort of thing. It's just typical, you know, ticket turnaround to expect. I mean, because I know I can hop on the phone with concierge for a lot of things, but then when it comes to the land team, you know, it's uh, we get it's you know, there's no direct communication. So um, we try we try to get through everything uh, usually within 24 to 48 hours. But I will tell you that we are a bit backlog backlog right now. We are working as quick as we can to catch up on that. So. You know, we are trying to make make it back to our goal. Gotcha. Awesome. And uh, map space, because we recently had to be moved, and we're still kind of cat into where we couldn't do the layout exactly like we wanted to. Because I know you are filled. Any plans to take off the old sims that are just taking up spots invisibly? You know, the ones that just like are, are bended down. They're there, just you know, things like that. And, if no, there's a spot like that, right. I was going to say, oh, if yeah, there's a spot like that, <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to you. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. No. Um, if there's a spot like that that uh, you are interested, curious about, let us know. We can take a look and we will adjust if we can. Yeah, a lot of times we can go ahead and move those down regions out of your way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I think we, we figured out how to split it in. I mean, I literally just went through this yesterday. So that's why it's fresh on the mind. Um, and yeah, an open spot. And, you know, being, we got moved as a courtesy move because we have regions joining us. And then it's like, oh, well, we can't go this direction. But OK, it still blocks in. But yeah. When the next sims do join, um, we t actually technically have a move ticket in right now. But um, it, uh, yeah, when the next sims join, do we? J I'll just put in a ticket for the land team to look into it versus concierge, correct? Actually, concierge can handle that too. They can move uh, down regions out of the way. That's not a problem. Um, also, if you do run out of space to expand, uh, concierge has the ability to, as a part of your new region purchase, not necessarily as a part of a move, but as a part of a new region purchase, moving your continent of regions to an area that will allow that placement. There are some stipulations that they can go through uh, with you when that happens, but that is definitely something that's offered because we don't want the fact that something's in the way to impinge on your ability to grow now like, like i said there are parameters that affect it and if it's your own region that's in the way that's possibly not something that they're going to go ahead and give you the free move for but if it's somebody else that's too close to you and you don't have any other way to expand and you are attaching to it they'll a lot of times move your connected regions in the same configuration to an area that allows that new region purchase to be uh, purchased adjacent and print limits, I know you'll have the, op the option to add the extra ones. Any more? <laughs> Curious on the land impact? Uh, not yet. Yeah. We're, we're still tackling the 30,000, so I don't see, I, don't, I haven't heard of anything to go above that yet. Okay, gotcha. Um, what about on demand, like snapshot saving? That may be something I'll put it in. Actually, I'll put it in a jar for that because it'd be interesting when you're doing a move and build and something doesn't work and instead of having to go through the, I need a rollover. <laughs> I think Gia has a question. Was that a request for new linden plants? 
while I don't know currently of any um, new things getting added to the library, um, I would say that I see so many things that I thought would never get refreshed getting refreshed. So never say never. I'm going to make a script and just attach it to a tiny little pixel that I attach to my head or something that whenever it sees a question mark, uh, it just goes ahead and has me say, I don't know of any current plans for it, but it could still happen in the future because unfortunately that seems to be what I get to say too often. We cannot confirm or deny. I'm sorry. Oh, I can deny like mad. I just can't confirm. Yeah, sadly, any time it's a question like, well, um, is there any chance that you'll, you know, do this or that with the viewer? Um, unfortunately, we usually don't have an answer, a good answer for that. Uh, but there is always a chance, sure. Um, I don't know what that chance might be, but there's always a chance. Um, you know, we just may not have that information, unfortunately. And it's a delicate yeah. balance act of, you know, what might we have heard that we can't talk about yet or let's say we haven't heard anything yet but i try to give a little bit of a trend analysis in that this has happened and this has happened and this has happened so it's kind of a good trajectory that that might be in the future but beyond that we really can't say much do y'all have a roadmap that y'all can link for for what y'all are planning on working on Oh, yeah. like that. I think that was released uh, either probably December or January. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Wendy and I are right at the same time. Nicely done. Uh, we didn't also, interrupt each other, Vix. We just wanted to beat you. <laughs> do you do y'all I'd go forward. Do y'all are land team. Do y'all handle uh, like global experience based for for the lands, or since it's land scope or global scope? Experience tools. Like uh, basically being able to have a global scope experience. One of the issues I run into is DCS heavily uses experiences for things, and now. You know, uh, it it goes to where you know they go like DCS is global everywhere, pretty much. It, it's active, but then reconfigures itself for whatever you know sim you're in if it's configured and changes everything. But having to check and disable experiences and fall back to it can't do X, Y, or Z. Are y'all going to be doing any more non land scope, basically global global scope experience for application things like that? I have no plans that I've heard of. Yeah. Same. No idea. Awesome. Wrong team. Because I just thought because it had land scope, you know, land. Never mind. The land team tries to claim everything that has the word land in it, but they don't let us. Well, and everything else. Well, yeah, that too. Sorry, Mari, I claimed that. We've got uh, give or take 10 minutes left if there's any other questions or comments or if anyone wants to bring up anything cool that they're working on or anything like that, please feel free. Anybody check out the Second Life Endowment of the Arts lately? Lexo, I know that went away at one point, um, and I know that there's been talk, but I don't know of any kind of a time frame or plan to move it forward.
Don't you dare, Gov. I want to thank no, our actually for the their service. service in Second Life. Uh, they'll be going away now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought uh, the abuse reports went to Black Hole Limited. Oh no. Funny you should mention that, Sassy. Why, that's a good topic for me to bring up right now. Have you checked out the Belly Hub? Well, we didn't talk about Belly Hub. My goodness. How did I not make the topic list? Two land guys here. Y'all ever thought about doing for like the help islands and stuff, like the community based ones, like game, you know, like role play, like uh, club, like things like that that have, you know, it's like, I don't know, maybe cycle in small features of, of like, you know, or monthly editor selected you know locations that it brings you to things like that that are integration with the community for well, that's to, kind of to, part of the reason why onboarding it was to go ahead and allow them to build the more thematic uh and niche uh, uh onboarding stuff gotcha yeah because the course, biggest thing is better entries. Yeah, yeah. if we did it then it would pull away from those communities being able to do it Correct. But if you know of a theme or a niche that doesn't exist in a community gateway, that's something that maybe you could pitch and uh, build out. Sure. Sassy, I would definitely say if somebody's trolling at one of the help islands or social islands kind of places, abuse report them specifically from them. There are active ban lists uh, uh, for those specifically that aren't just mainland ban lists uh, that can get people removed. And we rarely unban somebody that's been banned from those. Oh, speaking of such thing, is it possible to have... Um that with when you're banning somebody, is it possible or maybe future requests for this to have like IP type ban or whatever? Because a lot of the issues they'll just go roll and all and come in. Yeah, definitely future requests. Okay. And governance is definitely outside of our scope up here. Uh, I was thinking more from the land tool perspective, you know, like being able to, to uh, with the ban. But yeah, I guess it does go into governance. And yeah, we don't really change the prim allotments for mainland regions. Mazikeen, I now know who you're named after. <laughs> and y'all still won't give her my last name. I keep trying to, I got, I've actually put in a request for it to where when you partner somebody, you get the ability, since you'll have the new name change system, to take that name. Oh, for that added fee, of course. Lovely for role-playing purposes. Yes, exactly. Very much so. Because, and, and, you know, it's it just, you know, if they're going to do the partner, charge a fee, whatever I mean, for it. It's technically, I know it's, it's not part of us, it's, it's a service we offer, but it, it's technically there if you have if your both accounts have the uh, you know the eligible uh, membership level. Um, when a name comes up, you both can choose it. Um, yeah, so I heard you're looking said, at like a perk of being a partner in like a free name. So yeah, I heard the, that basically Dim is requesting that partnering should cost a hundred dollars and include two free names. <laughs> I would say actually being able to take on a legacy name. Like, for example, my company is Dravanti LLC. I'm tied to this last name. She cannot get it because, you know, she just didn't make an avatar at that time. My yeah. only option, because I do own the company and, and LLC with it, would be name API thing and, and you know, uh, what is it, the, the custom name, which is insanely costly. Yeah, Dravanti LLC or legacy name? 
just like being able to have, have her take Mazaki Giovanni as, as her user name. The only problem I've got with uh, being able to buy into legacy names is it also kind of disrupts the whole fact of a legacy name, so I don't know that they're ever going to touch that. Yeah, that, uh, that's what I'm saying. We're hesitant to use the new available last names because, like I said, my company is Trevanti LLC, so I'm tied. I'm really tied to it. <laughs> right. So and you basically based things. your company name off of an existing legacy name that was a regular name at the time. That was, yeah, pretty much because it's become pretty much a, like a thing, you know, it's, it's an identity and that's a lot of times a lot of people have it like, and it becomes that. And like even doing the, uh, the, you know, the, the allowed name where we buy the name basically and pay for it, uh, <laughs> it goes back to the transferring of items because then it'd have to be a new character avatar. And then, you know, everything bought is gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's as people pay a lot. I mean, yeah. I, Like as uh, like Karen, for example, yeah, they, I would totally be on board for that. And like, as long as you're partnered, you can keep it. When you go, when you're unpartnered, you go back to your your maiden name, your real name. Yeah, the thing I've got with that is, let's say they went ahead and did that, and then a thousand people all took the Travanti last name. Then I got a lot of cousins. <laughs> And that is true, Sassy. Yeah, I mean, there'd be tons of those names anyways. I just want to be able to get more Tox names, T-O-X-X, because, you know, because Toxie and stuff. So it's like, hey, <laughs> mine. <laughs> And yes, there is the snowlands on um, the main continent of Second Life, uh, so there are some snow parcels that are available out there. There aren't at current any for Linden Homes. Um, I don't know if there will be in the future. I have no information whatsoever, but um, there are at least uh, snowlands on the mainland. You and me both, Sassy. It teased that one time. I forgot which celebration it was, but we introduced a few storms around, and that was fun. Oh, what was that? That was, was April 1st was... last year. Was that last year's April 1st? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this year was the UFOs. I hope people enjoyed, didn't get too annoyed by those. Yeah, yeah weather maybe. maybe. The, uh, the, the uh, April Fool's, uh, the new Linden Homes, the apartment building. <laughs> ah, yes. The brutalist block. <laughs> no, don't mention floods. Toxins will flee. We flood the city like once a year. Seeing that, I can live out my childhood. Get an apartment building. <laughs> Speaking of that, apartments. Z level parceling would be great for that sort of thing. That We're just about out of time today. Yeah.
Oh, sorry about that, Wendy. Yeah, that, that has come <laughs> up uh, quite a few times. Um, right now, there is no uh, functionality or plans to to have uh, parceling in, in the, that access. Oh, yeah, so I need to put a feature request for, like, the other thing that I think does fall in you know, scope is we have functions for region change and scripting be great for parcel change uh, event because uh, that way things like, you know, my TCS or things can reconfigure based on parcel versus me having a scan. Well, I thank you all for coming today. Um, it's a great discussion. Uh, we hope to see Excellent you in the next discussion. one. Thank you very much. Yeah, we hold this... Uh, once a month, uh, fourth Wednesday at noon. And uh, if we don't see you before then, we'll see you, you know, tickets, whatnot. Give us a holler. Take care, all. See ya. Have a good day, everyone.